Democrats. <laughs> okay, we have one more member joining. Greg is joining. Well, that's good. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And if we have enough members for quorum to do the vote, then we can take that matter up. If not, we cannot take that matter up. Um, so let me first start um, by welcoming everybody who did make it. Thank you. Hope everybody is staying safe this weekend and dry. Um, our agenda um, was the consent vote. So we'll hold that off. Um, I wanted to go through um, the district level delegate um, filing is open. So actually now um, district level at large and the party le leaders and elected officials, all of these different types um, of delegates are now open. So we'll be giving information out on that. Um, I wanted to open up tonight's um, meeting, uh, Governor Newsom today issued a proclamation, and I'd like to just read this proclamation into our record. Um, issued on February 19th, 1942, Executive Order 9066 authorized the forced evacuation and incarceration of thousands of loyal United States citizens because of their Japanese ancestry. Over two and a Hi. half years, the US government removed Japanese Americans from their homes on the West Coast without a trial or due process, forcing them into internment camps in unfamiliar lands, uprooted their lives and their livelihoods. They endured miserable conditions and treatment by military guards. Despite these experiences, Thousands of young Japanese American men enlisted in the US Armed Forces, bravely fighting to defend the nation that was ab abridging their own freedoms at home. We honored their sacrifice as well as the resilience that made it possible for thousands of Japanese American families to reclaim and rebuild their lives after the war. A, a decision motivated by discrimination and xenophobia the internment of Japanese Americans was a betrayal of our most sacred values as a nation that we must never repeat. This stain on our history should remind us to always stand up for our fellow Americans, regardless of their national origin or immigration status and protect the civil rights and liberties that we hold dear. I ask that all Californians join me in solemn remembrance of the issuance of the Executive Order 9066 on this day in 1942. I similarly ask that the Californian commemorate the recession, recession, I can't say this word, recession of the Executive Order 9066 by President Gerald R. Ford on February 19th, 1976. Now, therefore, I, Gavin Newsom, Governor of the State of California, do hereby proclaim February 19, 2024, as a day of remembrance, Japanese American evacuation. And that was uh, proclaimed today by the governor's office. Um, let's see, let me get back to my Zoom here and see, do we have quorum yet? Mr. Secretary, let's see. Yeah, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. We do not. So I'm gonna hold off on that vote. We will not do um though I don't think it's gonna hurt their campaigns. Again, they're running unopposed, uh, but we cannot vote on that, unfortunately. Um I'm gonna well, go Are you sure about that? I see eleven participants. So we we have three folks on from Jerry's campaign. Mm. So that's that's not going to get us there. Okay. Um, I'm going to hold up on this delegate information and actually I'm going to 
turn over the call to Madhu, who is our field organizer working for Jerry McNerney. So I'll let you go ahead and give us an update. Yeah, hi all. Um, thank you so much for having me today. Um, and thanks to everyone who came for our kickoff. It was a lot of fun. Um, and I hope Jerry can be here at some point. Um, but yeah, so basically wanted to let you guys know about some volunteer opportunities and ways to get involved with the campaign. Um, we have phone banks every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. In fact, right before your weekly Monday meetings from 5 to 7 p.m. Um, and we have canvases every weekend in the Tri-Valley. So, you know, if you can't get a ride to Pleasanton, Dublin, or Livermore, I'm happy to arrange that. Um, so, so we'll go over that more towards the end. Um, but we have lots of opportunities in the coming weeks. And it's really, really important that as a community, we all get involved. There are a lot of attack ads right now that are just completely false. Um, our district really just needs Jerry. I mean, he's the he's the only one that has lived in Pleasanton. He's the only one that has lived in the Tri-Valley. So, you know, he's the only one that can represent us properly. Um, and so today what I wanted to do was give a little bit of information about phone banking and how our phone banking sessions go. Um, this is what I feel like is convenient to most people. You can do it in the comfort of your own homes. Um, all you got to do is have a phone, a tablet, or a computer. You can log in. Very easy. Um, and the best part is you get to talk to people in, in your own community. Um, and so uh, that's always awesome. So this is going to be really short and there's going to be lots of room for questions. Let me just share my screen. Uh, you want to do postcards? Oh yeah. Postcards would be awesome. Um, I think Jackie has a set and I can come around and deliver some too. If you guys um, want to. I finished all my Pleasanton ones. Um, Kyoko, I'll, I'll check in with Kyoko and see what she still has, if she has any more, because we were trying to get them out ASAP. I'm not sure if it, mine are all done. I got them all done. Okay, um, let's go. So basically how um, how phone banking works and um, and I'll send you guys a link to our phone banking packet afterwards. Um, and when you actually, when you're on the, on the program, this will make a lot of sense, but each week when you sign up through our Google form, or when you reach out to me directly, um, I'll send you a Google hangouts link. That's where we meet every day, um, every day, Monday to Monday to Thursday. Um, and on that Google hangouts link, I'll be there to give you specific instructions, help you get on our program, um, and help with any questions. Um, and then, you know, you use a computer, a phone or tablet, have that with you. You can use the same computer you log on with. Um, and on the Google Hangouts link, I will send you a link to our, um, to scale to win, which is the program we use. Um, and all you've got to do is press that and you get into the program and you just got to start calling. That's literally it. Um, there'll be a script on the program, um, it's it's really easy. Um, and then the system, the dialer will just keep on going. So you don't have to press it. You don't have to, you know, put punch in numbers or, you know, and or do any of that stuff. It's just you just start calling and the program will guide you through that. Um and yeah, so before we start calling, I'm sure all of you guys have phone banked before, so this is nothing new, but um to get comfortable with Jerry's campaign message, and we're gonna go through that. Um, we have a script. It's in the phone banking packet. I will send that to you at the end of the presentation. Um, so that should have the main main talking points. Um, and basically, you know, these are these are our neighbors. They're our friends. They might be people we know from from our different clubs that we're in, or just people we've interacted with. So you know, it should just have genuine conversations with these folks, um, and to really be honest and passionate about why you're voting for Jerry and why you think Jerry is the best candidate out there. Okay, so first, um, regarding the attack ads, which you might have gotten in the mail, um, there are two main responses to those. One is that special interests are trying to buy this election. If you see who sponsored those ads, that should be very clear. Um, 
our competitors are supported by PG&E, big oil, big pharma, big real estate. People don't like that. Um, and special interests are, you know, spending millions of dollars to prevent Jerry from being in power um, because they know that he's going, he has the, he's going to stand up against them and he's going to stand up for us. Um, and so they're spending lots and lots of money to do that. Um, and so emphasizing that special interests are behind the opposition is a big point. And the second is um, a lot of ads out there are saying that uh, Jerry is against women's rights or abortion or, you know, all that nonsense, but that's not true. Jerry is the only candidate that's endorsed by reproductive freedom for all for by Planned Parenthood. Um, and so, and he has consistently in the congressional record supported women's rights. Uh, yes. May I, may I ask a question here? Yes. Yes, Jeff. So, so the first uh, negative mailer that came to me in the mail was a real shock when it said Jerry, voted, when he was in Congress, voted against uh, women's reproductive freedom. Where the heck is that coming from? Yeah. So uh, Jerry, um, there was a bill um, to bring about $400 million to build a veterans clinic uh, in Stockton. Um, and the Republicans on the Hill at the time um, kind of included an amendment to this bill that would have removed money from abortion clinics in Peru, I think, in a Latin American country. Um, and so, you know, Jerry had to vote on to this bill because, you know, it was they're bringing money into his district to build a veterans clinic. Um, but he wasn't responsible for that. That has nothing to do with them. It was um, it was politics and it was Republicans. Thanks for that clarification. The other question was concerning <clears throat> which of his opponents are the uh, these uh, corporations trying to uh, get elected uh, yeah, so it's 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 Carlos. Um, Carlos is backed by PG&E and Big Oil, and um, and that's responsible for the mailers. So, mm. yep. Does that answer your questions, Jeff? Yes, I think so. Uh, you just said that Carlos is responsible for the mailers. Um, if yes, that was I... true. It would be illegal. Yes. Because the mailers are from independent expenditures, which are legally required to be at an arm's length from the actual candidate. Yes. Pass, I think, are running them, right? Yeah, let me step in here and say, I also wouldn't be surprised if Carlos is coordinating with those IEs. Uh, that's just how he is. So I want to drop that in here as well. Yeah, well, we... we Without evidence, we're accusing him of a crime. Yeah. And um, we, we ought to I'm, refrain from that. Yeah, I'm really sorry about that. Um, yeah, that's well, completely right. Th th that's um, okay. You're amongst friends, and we cleared yeah. it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's completely right. And I'm really sorry about that. But um, I mean, what I was trying to say is that, you know, the big interests behind those mailers are the same big interests that are supporting this candidate. So. Uh, uh, concerning Jeff's question about reproductive uh, rights and Jerry voting against it, uh, the story that Eloise Hammond was given, and she repeated it to me, was that uh, there was some, some kind of uh, ailment during pregnancy, and I think it started with an S, uh, but some ailment. And apparently uh, there was a poison pill within the legislation that said that a woman couldn't have an abortion if she had this particular thing. And it was life threatening. But um, I, I didn't get all the details of that. But uh, do you have the details on that? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't. Maybe someone else on the team does. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, OK, well, get back to us on that, because uh, Eloise was, um, the hair on the neck group <laughs> was standing up about that because of the mail that she got. And uh, she went directly to Jerry about it. So uh, I'm not sure, uh, but uh, also she went to Valerio. Okay. So so maybe it was Valerio that has the, the, the right. I can... 
step in here, uh, everybody. So uh, HR 2577 uh, was a 20, uh, 2015 bill that had two functions, uh, military aid, veterans, veterans affairs funding and construction for different facilities. And it was coupled with uh, the Zika virus uh, response bill. Um, the Zika virus response bill was foreign aid to Latin American countries to fight the Zika virus outbreak in 2015. Uh, this was a GOP Republican ha uh, controlled house at the time. And uh, they slipped in a rider um, at the very end that prevented funding for a uh, clinic, help for women's clinics uh, down in Latin American countries. It was foreign aid. And it was probably a couple hundred thousand dollars, honestly. Thank you for clearing that up. Yeah, that's consistent with what Madhu just said. Yeah. A ago. So, yeah. So that's not surprising. Uh, yeah. But if Every... I may have uh, just a follow up to the other question concerning. Uh, you're basically saying that all these big corporations are putting big money into this uh, campaign uh, because they really want Jerry's primary opponent to win. Uh, but is it for that reason or is it pri primarily because they don't want um, McNerney in there because he would be bad for their interests? in his uh, pushing for um, solar and wind energy and things like that. Is there any connection there? Yep, Valerio? Uh, it's both, Jeff. Um, number one, they want Carlos in there because that's their representative in the assembly and they want their representative in the state Senate now. Uh, number two is they don't want Jerry in there. Honestly, it's both. Um, they don't want Jerry in there because they know that there'll be, you know, some hard, you know, there's going to be some votes against the big oil for sure. Uh, offshore drilling is is one of them, and they know that. Um, PG&E, we've already, you know, came down hard hard on PG&E in Congress. They they felt the brunt of Jerry's votes and in, in that in the Energy and Commerce Committee. So, and then the realtors, I mean, they're just evil, as I hear. <laughs> honestly mm -hmm. so there's there's multiple reasons here why they're getting involved uh, on the side of carlos there they are business interests there and they prefer someone that has more of a business mindset in sacramento i hope that answers your question yes it uh, does thank you uh, jeff to add on to that this is round one of a two round contest right uh, so the top two, which are probably going to be Jerry and Carlos, uh, are um, going to go at it until I, I November. Actually, I actually want to correct that, Ellis. It is likely going to be a Democrat and a Republican uh, in November. So right now, it's that much more important that we get Jerry in. Um, because if he doesn't get it in, he, he didn't, doesn't get in now, uh, he won't make the top two. The Republican will likely be first place that's what our polling shows really uh, i'm surprised at that also it doesn't surprise me because it's it's not the same market ellis is is here uh, the more you go into central valley the more conservative it gets uh but jerry's been there for <laughs> way over 10 years and uh, he has his reputation and all of that. Yeah, yeah Republican Republican County, County is uh, yeah, Salmon County is a pretty conservative county. Um, you know, there is Lodi, there's Ripon, there's es Escalon, and the uh, unincorporated areas of the county. Um, there is enough Republican votes that a Republican will float to the top, um, for sure. And now it's a different story in November. It is a heavily Democratic district. But in this three-way split here between Democrat, Democrat, and Republican, a, a Democrat will make it to the top, uh, to the top two, and a Republican will make it as well. It just—it's just a matter of which Democrat, really. And then this is where 
you know, this calculation here where, you know, the Tri-Valley is, is, is such a big, a, such a big deal to us, uh, not only because we live there and because we were presented there, you know, there, it is a pretty, um, you know, hefty size of, of vote, the democratic votes that Carlos is, you know, just trying to scratch at. So, um, this is why tri the, the endorsement here with Tri-Valley Dems and our involvement in the Tri-Valley is so much more important. It, it really matters. I hope that's helpful, guys. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for the questions and thank you, Bellario. Um, yeah, so I mean, this this is a extension of that discussion, but you know, why Jerry? Um, he's been in Congress for 16 years. He has that experience. Um, he'll be the only state legislator with a strong scientific background. Um, and he was responsible responsible for building a lot of the infrastructure in the area. And I think, um, you know, personally, I think that's pretty important when you're talking about projects like Valley Link. Valley Link, um, he knows how to create well-paying local jobs. And he's also committed to clean energy and um, reducing pollutions while also bringing down energy costs. Um, he secured... $400 million to build um, to build Stockton's first VA clinic. So before him, uh, veterans would have to drive six hours um, to go access health care. Um, and, and Jerry's the one that made sure that that didn't have to happen. Um, and, and, you know, you can just look at his record, but he's expanded a lot of local programs, Women's Health Center, local police. He really gets things done. Um, and he has the experience uh, and the background and the determination and dedication to be able to do that. Um, and most importantly, I think when you're talking to voters is that he is the only candidate that has experience um, both living in and working in both sides of the Altamont. Um, and so we're in this really interesting district where you have the Tri-Valley and you have the San Joaquin County. Jerry is the only person who can represent both those regions. Um, and I think that's a point to drive home. Um, and so these are also issues that you might encounter when talking to voters Cost of living is a huge concern. Um, it's become really, really expensive, and that's where the PG&E, uh, the PG&E bit comes to play. Um, we want a cleaner, greener economy. Jerry has experience working in that industry. Um, water is huge. Public safety is huge, um, and I think Jerry is also a point to drive home. Is he, you know, he has a very uh, interesting take on the Second Amendment. Um, and so, you know, these are issues that you might come across. I have a more thorough uh, a thorough um, packet that discusses these. Um, and so I'll send that over. Um, but these are just general issues and stances to familiar, familiarize yourselves with before. Uh, before yeah, what, what's his Second Amendment uh, unique yeah. perspective? So Jerry is a hunter, so he's not completely anti-gun, um, have to get rid of everything. But, you know, gun violence is a serious issue in this country. He recognizes that and he has four policies um, to ensure that people can be safe gun owners uh, to reduce gun violence as much as possible. So. Yeah, Carlos has an ad on television that shows him hanging out with the farmers. Maybe Jerry should do something like that too. Yep. Valerio. Um. Thanks, Sharon. I'll, I'll pass it along to some of our policy team. Um, we are going to be doing a photo shoot, maybe a video out in a few farms, but that's coming down the pike. Yeah, but this is on like every night. Shows them, you know, with the farmers. There's a really good... Um, Valerio, are you guys going to be able to show that video that that's going to be making its way on social media? Uh, it should be coming online in maybe just a few hours. Uh, just keep on looking at your Facebook and and interact with the internet. You might just get served the ad. It's a really cool video, Sharon, and it shows lots of our local leaders with Jerry, which is just as good. We don't we don't have so many farmers here in Livermore. <laughs> Some cowboys, but not a lot of farmers. <laughs> Used to. Um, Used I'll to. go ahead and I'll go ahead and drop it in the chat. Uh, but it's not exactly live yet, so uh, let's not share it just yet. Okay. Um, 
Yeah. And so we really need volunteers. So please um, sign up here. I'm dropping the link in the chat. Um, and I will continue. Is it the same as the one on the screen? Yep. Okay. You want to do postcards? We'll do postcards. Yeah, we'll do that. There's the link to sign up. Um, Mad Madhu, what what would you like? Where do we pick up our materials if we need extra? Should uh, does Kyoko have um the large batch of stuff for Livermore, or do we reach back out to you if we run out of materials? So I'm dropping some stuff off for Kyoko tomorrow. Um, and yeah, so she should have materials for you guys to reach out to. Um, that's probably easiest. Maybe go through her. Perfect. I'll use her as a hub. And and by the way, I didn't see that big flag that was up on the wall. Uh, that was Kyoko's, and I don't know what happened to it when we packed up. So I don't know if they remember that big plastic flag. <laughs> if you happen to find that, that's Kyoko's. That goes back to her. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Hey. I, I have a question. I received a push poll call and it was, you know, when, would you vote for uh, Jerry McNerney if you knew that he uh, was against uh, abortion rights and stuff like that? And you could just tell that, you know, that it was called and, and something to point out for everybody, whenever you get something that sounds ridiculous and that sounded ridiculous, I saw a Yale professor speak on this point, and there's always a monicum of true. Like, you know, the the, the twisted, uh, where it's a, a poison pill and legislation, there's always a monicum of truth in what they say that sort of shields them from, from being totally, you know, lying. And it, it, when you watch out for that, you'll just see all the things that are done in politics where there's just a little, little bit of truth. Dirty tricks, dirty tricks, don't like it. I did, in speaking to some of the um, people knocking doors the other day, they seem to be on to that. Um, several people said they, question when they saw that and it didn't make sense to them and they actually did some research and found the endorsements by Planned Parenthood for Jerry so maybe maybe the Trump effect people don't trust everything they hear anymore <laughs> maybe I don't know um any other questions for the campaign yes please come out and volunteer guys we really need it I'm going to hit the streets again tomorrow. It was too windy today, but tomorrow. Thank you, Jackie. Um, so you guys, um, if you have any questions, reach out to me. I can put you in touch with the campaign or, um, you know, sign up. There's not only phone banking, there's canvassing. I mean, any day of the week, there's something going on. Okay. We help. I just wanted to let you know that we help get Jerry elected. To well, Congress. They, they know that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thank you. Is he going to do another farmer's market like he did in Livermore? Um, he didn't do the farmer's market. We were actually just meeting up there and canvassing. He was, he was there to go door knocking. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, I have sent this information out, um, already, um, to all club members, but just to mention it again, uh, filing period is open now for district level, uh, delegates. Um, California is going to send 496 delegates and 35 alternates. Um, and the convention, let's see, Oops, let me pull that up. I had the website up, bear with me. Oh, there's something in the chat. Okay, that was just that thing. Okay, stand by guys. Let me get this up.
When I start oh. Zoom, sometimes I can't find my windows. Okay. Um, okay. 496 delegates, 35 alternates. Uh, all pledged delegates are allocated to the presidential candidates according to the results of the March 5th primary. Obviously, it's going to be Joe Biden, so they're all going to be pledged to Joe Biden. Um, if you want to fill out an application, um, all of the forms, all the various levels, the at-large level, Form B is also open. Um, that is... Um, At-large delegates are selected from statewide pools and offer another way. So the district level, um, that's going to be based on your congressional districts where you live and obviously supporting Joe Biden. And the filing period is open through March 21st. Caucuses will be held April 21st in each congressional district. And then the convention, looks like there's gonna be May 18th is a statewide delegation meeting. And then where is the convention? Let's see. It's, Chicago. it's in Chicago. It's in Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. yeah it's in Chicago. August. August and 19th. It is August 19th through the 22nd. And this on the CalDems website, it has everything you ever wanted to know, including if you are thinking about being a delegate, the hotel costs, estimated costs to go to the convention. All of that information is here. So if you wanna be a delegate um, and you're not a party leader or elected official, now's your time to file the, your form A for district level. Um, does anybody have any questions about it? it I don't uh, need to there, just there, keep what's there, off the website. Something, there's an opportunity buried in there. Okay, let me explain. In 2016, there were caucuses for Bernie Sanders and for Hillary Clinton. Uh, me and Gordon Miller ran the one for Bernie Sanders up in Rossmore. We probably had close to 200 people there voting for about 60 candidates of which maybe two or three got to go to the convention. Similarly, in Eric Swalwell's district, uh, Kyoko held the caucus with a similar number of people attending at the IBEW. Now, these people are people who come out to vote for candidates who want to go to the convention, friends of theirs, but they have to sign something that says they're registered Democrats. So here we have registered Democrats in a rather large number in a room voting for delegates to the convention. And if the Tri-Valley Democratic Club kind of hosts this thing, then we get the pitch. To I think they're going to do it quite different this year, Ellis. I, and th the reason I believe that is, I think you guys froze too. <laughs> it's unusual. <laughs> but I think it's uh, I think it's going to be much more automated this year. Um, if it if the um, the pre endorsement uh, vote was any indication, it it was not you know, the informal, it was actual ballots being sent, right? It was electronic. So I don't know how they're actually going to hold that day, the caucuses. Um, I do know that in District 10, um, District 10 is allocated six delegates and one alternate. 
and District 14 is also six and one. So I do know the counts. I know um, some dates and some high level stuff, but how they're actually gonna manage that, I think we will be finding out probably sh shortly. Um, we will uh, find- Because it, it was, of course, all the Democrats in a congressional district, but there are tens of thousands of Democrats in either one of those congressional districts, but only 200 people, less than that, showed up, my recollection. But uh, I don't know if they're going to do it that way this year, Ellis. So let's yeah. wait. See, let's not assume be what we did back eight, 12 years okay. ago. Okay, uh, possible same. opportunity. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll keep that in mind. Um, I need to talk to Igor and maybe maybe they have some more information um, about the process. I'll try to find out more information about that process. Um, estimated costs for travel to this is somewhere between $26.50 and $3,000. So it's not cheap to be a delegate. Um, so that's out there. Um, let's see. And what else did I have on the agenda? Um, actually, why don't we go to the treasurer's report? Okay. Um, I, I actually did a close of the year a January and a February. I'm just going to give the February report and give the year to date figures. So, you know, what we're, we're starting with, uh, we started the year with $1,743 and 75 cents. Uh, so far, Okay. Dues collected have been $12,010. Our credit card fees have been $47.12. We made one donation to a candidate for $250, meaning our expenses for the year have been $297.12, um, giving us a net income of $912.88. We started out with $1743.75 and our current balance is $2,656.17. We have 66 members. Um, I have to add up the ones that uh that were members last year and haven't joined, but a good a good many of them have. Anybody have any questions? Wonderful. I guess maybe after the election, we should probably start trying to reach out to these past members and see if we get more on Yeah, board. just because so they don't uh, come too late in the year. It's hard for you to manage, I'd expect, with people. Well, it, 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 it's November. not hard. It's just it, it, it's sort of not fair to them. But right. like I, I sort of come up with a rule if you join um, October, November, December, you're joining for the following year. Um, and it'd be good to get just to get the people to join, you know, before, well, certainly for April or so. Okay. That'll be something for next month, maybe. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll give you, a, that I'll, after. I'll have a list prepared of the number of people who haven't rejoined and we can go from there. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, okay, and Ellis. Yes, ma'am. Director's report and, and secretary report. Okay, well, first the secretary's report, the minutes from the, uh, the meeting of January 15th. Uh, they're on our YouTube channel and uh, Tri-Valley Democratic Club on, on YouTube. And uh, you called the meeting to order. I led the pledge. <laughs> uh, we heard from candidates Jeremy McNerney and Carlos Viaputa uh, running for Senate District 5. And uh, when we voted later on, uh, Jerry got 100% of the votes and endorsement. We also voted for uh, Supreme Court uh, Office 12. Uh, and we interviewed Mark Fickus and M Michael J uh, Johnson, and Mark Fickus got 78.6% of the vote, 
and our endorsement. And then we had on the consent calendar, uh, Congressman Mark Dussonye, uh Eric Swalwell, and Assembly Member uh, Rebecca Bauer Cahan. And uh, we endorsed them on a consent calendar unanimously. And uh, later I wrote a press release saying all of that. Uh, we didn't vote for endorsements, but we heard from several candidates for the Central Committee, the Alameda County Central Committee in AD 16 and AD 20. And it's a long list and they're not even here, so I won't read them. Okay. Uh, and, uh, okay, the, the, uh, we heard from Swing Left who are writing postcards to, um, to hotspot districts, let's say. And uh, we had a motion to allocate $250 toward that. And I made the motion and Sharon here uh, seconded and it passed unanimously. We heard the treasurer's report that there were about 50 members. So according to Alan, we picked up about 16 since this point and he was expecting about 120. And uh, uh, Jackie at the end read the results and Mark Fickus thanked the club for its endorsement and we adjourned. And that's the uh, secretary's report. The uh, political directors put on the political hey, hey, directors. Alice, can I? I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Since we have, I pulled my husband from downstairs. That'll give us Tim. <laughs> can I? Can we do the consent vote really quick? I'm gonna have my go, husband. Go You're for just it. Be with me here. Here he is. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay. With my now husband. you're a consenting adult. Uh, my husband, Barely. who is a member, he we have um, quorum. So I would like to make a motion um, to uh, endorse the two candidates that are running unopposed, and that is Liz Ortega for AD twenty and Elisa Marquez for Supervisor D District two. Do I have a second on that motion? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. You can okay. go back and watch TV. Okay, <laughs> okay Alice, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Okay. Um, I put on my um, political director's hat. And <laughs> uh, earlier today, uh, Jackie called me and she said, uh, at the end of the meeting, uh, could you say some stuff about Heinz uh, Gerwing, uh, who I did know and had been a longtime member, uh, not a, a very close friend, but I've known him for quite a few years. And uh, his story relates to something that's happening right now. Uh, he was uh, an immigrant from Austria during World War II, and his family went to Shanghai. And he was known, as many of the people there were, as the Shanghai Jews. And they eventually came to this country. Uh, I read in his obituary that he spent a considerable amount of time in Shanghai as uh, that place was friendly to Jews, and uh, the Jews were just looking for any place that would give them sanctuary. He eventually came to the United States, uh, got a good education, and in fact, uh, as best I can tell, was the first superintendent of schools in Dublin when the Dublin Unified School District came into existence. And he was the superintendent at whatever the prior entity was. The thing that I remember about him, and it's kind of strange, uh, 
I, I was going to a, a peace rally at Laney College uh, with Karen Beck, a friend of ours. And uh, I ran into Heinz and Eileen Barr on BART. And I had known Heinz and Eileen from Jerry McNerney's campaign. She was, in fact, the uh, organizer for Dublin in Jerry's uh, second campaign in 2006. So you can go to our house and pick up walk lists and literature and stuff like that and also get a pep talk. Anyway, uh, we went to Laney College and I saw uh, a man named Otto and somebody else. And Otto was the president of the uh, Democrats of Rossmore, the largest democratic club in the universe, as far as I can tell, or at least that's what they claim. And no kidding, within 45 seconds, Otto and Heinz realized that they were Shanghai Jews. It was like telepathy. It happened so quickly that it was almost like the first words out of Heinz's mouth. Later on, um, probably several years later, Tim Sobrante was running against Catherine Baker and they I were, they were uh, I don't know who that was. <laughs> Tim Sobrante was running against Catherine Baker and they were debating in the Walnut Creek um, uh, city council chambers. And we were waiting for Catherine Baker to show up. And uh, Heinz was sitting directly in front of Otto. And uh, I had to reintroduce them. And those are the things that stick in my mind. But many times uh, I was with uh, Heinz and his brother at uh, not only peace demonstrations, but when we were demonstrating about uh, Wall Street and we had Occupy Wall Street and the, nine, and the 99 percenters. His brother Walter, who of course uh, went through the Hong Kong, not Hong Kong, uh, Shanghai experience with him. We but it brings to mind, let me finish Sharon. It brings to mind, and uh, I've just, finished reading the book by Rachel Maddow, Prelude, that the whole Holocaust and the Nazi thing is not behind us, but it seems to be in front of us at this point. And unfortunately, we're going to have to fight that fight again. And in this country, and what Rachel Maddow pointed out was that the Nazis didn't originate in this country. It was Henry Ford who pushed it in this country. It came out of the Civil War and the racism of the Civil War. And that's really where it was born. It was born here. And that's my message that what Heinz was fleeing from I'm hoping that we don't have to flee from, but we have to push back on that very hard. And uh, I know that all the elections that I've pumped people up for in the last 15, 20 years, I've always said there's never been a higher stake. I remember saying that in Jerry's first election when we were going against George Bush in the war in Iraq. But today it's really true. It's democracy against autocracy on this planet. And it's up to us to stand up for democracy. So that's my um, political director's report. There's plenty of opportunities. Thank you. We were with Heinz and Eileen at some recent occasion. I don't remember what it was. We were sitting next to them. It, it, I, I think it was at Eric's Walwell's seasonal party. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. 
Okay, and all, also, I'm going to boast about this. Ellis is going to be talking about anti-Semitism at the uh, Philo Cafe, oh, which is the first Thursday of the month at night. It's on Zoom. Okay. Some reason, Jeff, you come off as the speaker on, on, my, on my Kindle. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, send me the information and I'll send it out to members. Well, I, I, I don't know. My, my wife just invited you to something that we're not at liberty to just invite everybody. Well, to. I, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. No, no problem. Um, and, you know, I do want to close with in memory of Heinz, as well as, like Ellis said, um, this election, this election season is pretty terrifying. Um, what we could lose. Uh, there were Nazis marching in Nashville today or yesterday. This weekend. It just disgusting. And, you know, we have, um, Anti anti uh, Semitic stuff painted on down in Oakland um, near the water um, vandalism that happened this weekend. Um, yeah, we need to we need to stop this. We need to stop this hate. What's happening in Gaza is awful, but we cannot re bring hate um, to our neighbors, to our communities, and. Um, with that, with that cherry, cherry statement, we'll just go ahead and close tonight. And oh, I wanted to ask you a question. Uh, when can we pick up postcards and stuff? Uh, Jerry's campaign's going to deliver a whole bunch to you. No, we already did them. That's why I don't understand where you're at. I could contact Madhu and ask her if there's more available. We did them. Oh, okay. this uh, I, I think the, the cow's out of the barn for the primary, but uh, there's lots of stuff to do uh, in what I'll call the second round. There's We definitely need um, people to call. Yeah, calling makes sense Here's now. My, all my postcards. See, they're all done. Oh, wow. Nice postcards. And they came pre-addressed, and they gave us the stamps. So... But we we wanted to get them out, you know. I wanted to mail sure. them today. Yeah, you, you better get them out. Sure, so, sure. So tomorrow they go out. Um, but I mean, I could ask Madhu, but you. Yeah, yeah but it's the by the time yeah that goes out, it's going to be. By the time know. somebody gets them to you, <laughs> I'd have to drive to Danville. Uh, I, 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 I think what we're going to do is uh, we're, we're going to go online and. Uh, do some phone banking. That would be wonderful. Yeah. That would be wonderful. We can do that no matter what the weather is. Okay. Um, any other business, anyone for tonight? Christy, we're looking forward to hearing from you soon when you want to make your, your endorsement announcements and stuff. Yeah, that would be great. I mean, I've already officially announced in the newspaper, but well, it actually wasn't printed in one of them. It, uh, oh, so when, um, so this is going to be on November's election. Is that when? November. Well, why don't you just say something right now since we have some extra okay. time? Go ahead. Okay. So um, officially I announced on July, oh, July, January 22nd um, that I'm running for city council in Livermore in district four. Um, I'm currently a school board member here and um, was asked to run because the council member who represents my district is terming out. That's Bob Carling. Um, so I'm running to follow him and represent District 4. And that's my district. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. it, it may be mine also. Where is District 4? It's the southwest quadrant of Livermore. Okay, uh, so I'm in the East Sunset neighborhood. Is that in four? I think that, that is. East, yeah. I think so. That is, yeah. Just Isn't east. four all Sunset East, Sunset West, Shadow Brook, that whole, mm -hmm. everything south, right? Yes. Um, 
if you go to my campaign website, which I just put in the chat, wongforlivermore.com, there's oh. a, at the bottom of the homepage, there's a link there's where a you map. can put in your address to check what district you're in. Okay. Will this be settled in March? Or no, this is in November. In I would like it to be settled in March because currently there's I don't have an opponent. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, but you're not on the ballot. In not November. The, yeah, but not on the primary. No, uh, no it's November. November, okay. Oh, okay. But we're going to, um, when you are ready to do a full presentation and we will hold a forum for you and um, you let me know when you're ready for that. Um, I, the only other thing we have coming up that I have planned is in May is water month and we have one of the water board members coming to speak to us about water month. So I don't have anything on agendas. So you let me know, Christy. Do you let want to wait until someone runs against me or is this just as people? Uh, is it a I Democrat running against you? There's nobody yet. Nobody. Oh, that's good. If we have a Democrat, then we, we have to give them a forum. If a Republican, forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> and if there's nobody, forget about it. Okay, so we can listen to her anyway. Well, we can. Um, let's see what happens after the election. If more people start pulling papers, they have to go through the city for that, right? It won't show online with the yeah. county. It's a little early. The deadline is in August. So oh, okay. why don't we wait until the deadlines pass? That way we know we nobody's going to come crawling out of the woodwork crying. I had that happen with uh, Dublin City Council one time, so I don't want to <laughs> get in trouble. <laughs> I'm good either way. Okay. Well, we're excited that you're running. Thank you. Um, any other business? Anyone? I make okay. a motion meeting be adjourned. I second that motion and the meeting is adjourned. Thank you guys. See you later. Thank you. Good night, all. Okay.